welcome back. My name is Sydney, and welcome to the Adventure Fiberworks podcast. Um, yeah, welcome to episode two. And for all those who watched the first episode, thank you so much for the amazing warm welcome. Um, the comments in the last video were just so lovely. I loved hearing about everyone's projects that they were working on. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> it was way more than I thought it was gonna be in terms of like views and stuff and yeah I was really touched by just like how people clearly enjoyed it um so thank you so much for that super warm welcome um yeah it was so nice uh, so I guess we'll jump right into it um yeah June uh I totally meant to do this podcast earlier um because <sighs> I wanted to have, I like my goal is to have two episodes a month. That would be, I think like I'd be really happy with that and I think it's doable, uh, but June got away on me. Um, I finished my yoga teacher training um, course that was like gone on for the last six months, which was like huge to finish for the start of the month. And then immediately after that, and that was a couple days after I posted the first episode, me and my partner got COVID, um, finally hit us sucked we got it pretty mildly thank god um and then right after that we went to vancouver island for a week and yeah, it was so nice to get away um i'm gonna include some footage of that like a little vlog style at the end of this so you're welcome to skip it if that's not your thing um the intent was to have like a full vlog episode on that that did not happen so um <laughs> there's just like a little bit of the end um, but yeah, we, while we were there, we went to Rath Trevor Park, so we go camping, um, I'll stick an image here of our camping setup, because it's kind of interesting, we have a rooftop tent <clears throat> on a fairly small vehicle, um, and we went to, we drove through BC, and then we went to Rath Trevor Provincial Park for a few nights, um, it was kind of something, I had put it, saved it in my maps, as, like, obviously someone had told me to go there at some point. Um, it was gorgeous. Oh, my God. It was fairly inexpensive. I think it was, like, 30 bucks a night, um, which is pretty good for camping. It was so lovely. Like, I would recommend. That is, oh, the forest that the campsite's in is just remarkable. It's the big coastal um, seat, western cedars that are there. Um, and, yeah, just beautiful. There's a beautiful beach. I I wouldn't go swimming, but I'm a baby, um, so, like, if you like cold water, I guess. It was fairly cold while we were on the island, um, so, like, probably a lot of the footage I got were, like, in sweaters and jackets and hats, um, but I would recommend. It was super peaceful. We spent one day just decompressing from driving, um, all the way to the island, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend that, and then we met up with some friends. We went to Victoria for a day and went... I got to go to one yarn store. I had plans to go to like all of them. That did not happen. Uh, my partner hates going into fiber stores and like fabric stores. Uh, so we got one. But again, I'm going back to uh, Victoria for work in August. So I'm like, I'm going to all the stores. But I went to Beehive. It was lovely. Um, I'll show you what I got shortly. And um would recommend if you're in Victoria or like passing through there stop at Beehive Wool, Beehive Yarns, whichever one, um, right in downtown. <coughs> it's so nice, it's so good. Uh, we met up with my parents then in Tofino and stayed there for a few more days before driving back but um, the weather was kind of so-so. Um, I wanted to go surfing <coughs> and I had hauled my wetsuit like from Ontario to here um, back in April, <laughs> hold it all the way back out there. There was no swells. There was like no waves the entire time. So that didn't happen, which was fine because we didn't really have time. It was fairly busy, like three days we were there. Um, but we did get to go. My mom had booked us a whale watching, bear watching tour. It was more so so my mom went to high school there, um, and she wanted to show my dad the coastline. That was why she wanted to do it. She's like, I don't care if we see anything. Like it's nice, but I'm not. It's not the expectation, um, so we went into it with that too. I've been to Tofino, but uh, my partner hasn't either, so um, it's nice for him to see as well. But we had, it was like raining every day and cloudy and cold, and then that day, it was warm. 
it was sunny. It was like perfectly calm out. It was so good. Like, it, like the weather couldn't have been better. And then, um, right kind of like as we were going to turn around and go back to town, um, we got to see Will. And first, Lenny, who is our driver, I'll leave the contact information of the company that we went for it with. It's just Lenny and his wife who run it. Um, they're an indigenous couple and they live on one of the islands, I don't remember which one, that surround Tofino. Um, he was so nice. He had, he like told us stories of the land um, and like the islands and some of the history of it and then kind of his experiences living there. Um, and this man loves whales. It was so sweet because we saw the whale, it was a gray whale, um, like playing with a sea lion, um, which he's like, I've never seen that before, but they're like clearly playing because they're kind of like jumping around and stuff together. Well, gray whales don't really jump, but like the sea lion was. Um, and then the sea lion kind of went off and the um, whale came under our boat, booped the boat out of the way, because it's just like a small boat. Um, my dad and Dory were at the front, and then me and my mom were at the back, and it, yeah, it booped the boat out of the way, and then turned itself around, and popped its head out to take a look at us, like, you could, you're not allowed to touch the whales, for obvious reasons, um, but it was like a foot away, and it was, you could have touched the whale. Uh, I'll pop the photo here because Dory got managed to like snap one with his camera because he just went like this because like I don't want to be taking photos the entire time for this experience because it was oh it was so magical and like it sprayed us with this blowhole twice um on the photo you can kind of see the corner of the boat um it's so, like that's how close it was like it was right there we were just, yeah it was it was really good it was really fun um it definitely made for like a magical experience and then as we were it kind of disappeared and then as we were leaving that area it put on a little show for us so it was like um they don't do like the full like things that uh, humpback whales do but it was like popping up and showing its fluke and then it finally did like one big fluke and then dove under um so yeah it was pretty magical i think whenever you get to see a whale especially that close like oh my god um yeah it's just yeah, it's not something that's probably ever going to happen again, um, so it was, it was pretty good. Uh, definitely worth the trip. Um, and we just had a really good time. It was nice to get out of the city for like a full week. I don't think I've taken a week off work, um, like a full week off work, since I started um, with the company two years ago So that I work for. Um, so yeah, just nice to get away, visit people. We got to see, we have friends on the island. We got to see them all. Yeah, it was a great time. So... Now into knitting. I finished um, my Pluto Lopri tunic yesterday night when it was due. Um, so that was June 30th because I'm filming this on July 1st. And I put it on for five minutes and it was horribly hot. So it's blocked now. Um, it's a little damp, but it's still good. Um, yeah, I'll put some footage of me actually wearing this um, so you can see it because it's, it's quite long. It covers my butt. Um, it has this it's long um, like a split hem and it's a little longer in the back than the front uh, it's really lovely it's a bit itchy I blocked it in hot water last night um, so I just like filled the tub up with really hot water and then let it sit and didn't touch it for 20 minutes um, so it feels a bit softer I think and that could just be a lie but I think it's a little softer um, but it's yeah it's cute it's got this um really cute detail that you crochet actually I don't know how to crochet but uh, this is really easy um but I think this pattern's coming out in the fall um it's definitely not a summer knit I am really pumped to start knitting for summer um so yeah, that was really great to finally finish. I love the color that it's turned out, this like lovely marl. Um, I'll put the details again for this sweater. It's for B Man at B Mandarins on Instagram or Hall Melody Hoffman, I think's her name. Um, it was my first test knit and it was good. It's kind of nice having I don't mind having like a deadline to have things finished by because I'm a procrastinator. So having a deadline that's 
not me who's in charge of that? Or do we do great? Um, so yeah, uh, I finished this one. Really lovely. Um, and I did, oh, while I was in, which you'll see in the little uh, clips at the end, um, I knit, I think I talked about in the last podcast, I knit my mom a hat out of uh, Sunday by Sandy's Garn. Um, and it was the ribbed, lovely ribbed hat, the ribbed hat. It was a free Pearl Soho one. It turned out really nice. The hat's really great. Did I get any video footage of it? No, but I put this photo up here of my mom and my dad rocking their new hats. And my dad's is the Oslo hat. Um, so I finished that one while I was on the island. I started it, I think, just before we left. Um, yeah, it was easy. Ribbing definitely takes me longer than just doing, like, the Oslo hats, just straight knitting. Um, but, yeah, lovely hat. I was really happy how it turned out. Um... I was worried it was going to fit her head weird, uh, but as soon as she put it on, I was like, oh, it's perfect. It's adorable. So would recommend. Put links in the bottom. Um, so that, I did that. I think it took me like a week-ish. I was like, we're pulling into Tofino. Um, and I'm in the car, and so I got Dory. It's like, oh, let's stop at Long, Long Beach, um, which is part of the national park. I was like, let's stop here and take... Um, He's never been. I was like, let's take a little walk. And I'm like in the parking lot. I'm going to see my mom in like 30 minutes. Like really got to finish this. And I was like, see me get up. Um, and then I handed it to her like an hour later. Um, so we're like just in time. So the hats aren't blocked. My dad's Oslo hat did turn out a little tight for his head, but he didn't care. He was going to rock it anyway. Um, I informed him that he could wash it. So maybe it'll grow for him. Um, I don't know. It's not my problem anymore. He was very pleased. So yeah, that was good. Um, that was all I finished in terms of knitting because this this took up obviously most of the time. Um, oh, but now I'm like really pumped to knit things that don't make me feel hot. Not that it's hot here, but you know, it's warm. Um, I did make some other things. Um, let's do this one first. So right before we went to Tofino. Um, I was procrastinating from packing. So obviously I made a bag. Um, I sewed myself a bag. This is the project bag, maker's bag. Mm. I'll put it in the words here. Um, but this is, mm, there we go. This is the bag that I made and it's, are you gonna focus? No, yes. Um, bag that I made. It's really nice. So this is a noodle head bag and I had the pattern and I had all the materials for it and I was like I was using just like a regular purse kind of thing before but for that little opi sweater it was it was not fitting anymore. It was a little big so I wanted something better and I'm like well I need to procrastinate from doing something useful so I'm gonna make a bag. Um, and yeah. I bring my face in. There we go. Um, there we, uh, yeah, it's so nice. So this is just a quilting cotton, this part. Um, it was so easy. Like, oh my God, um, I wasn't expecting it to be that easy. I think I put it off because I thought it was going to be hard to sew, but like the zipper was the easiest part. Zippers are never easy. I hate zippers, but I liked this and I can't wait to make more. Um, I have a couple of our other patterns for like some backpacks, which I think would be really fun because, uh, I love this. The... This is an art gallery fabric. I have the whole line for quilting. Um, I can try and get the name of it. It was out last fall. Um, and then the this is a wax canvas and it's quite soft to the touch, um, but really structural. Yeah, the back's just wax canvas. The wax canvas is from Blackbird Fabrics. Um, I don't know if they have any left right now, but I'll um, they're really lovely place. They have really nice fabrics. Um, they're based in Vancouver, I believe. Um, so I'll, I'll post the links for them because they're nice if you are a sewist um, as well. And so um, it has this and so this squishes. So your project can actually be bigger than the bag and still be covered and protected from my cats. They just chew the ribbon and then 
I doubt you're going to be able to see this, but on the inside, I put white fabric, or cream fabric, um, and then it, this, uh, oh boy, there's some pockets in there to peep. I put, made sure one of them was big enough to put um, a folded piece of paper with my pattern because I like having the paper patterns, uh, and then I can sh stick some other stuff in the other pocket. Um, yeah, so easy. Like, I think it took me an hour and a half from, like, cutting to finished. Um, but, like, also, I need to put some grommets um, to hold the handle to the bag and reinforce it because it's just on these little, like, just the stitch line right now. But, yeah, if you're intimidated by making bags, I'll put the link for this one because it was so easy. Like, I don't know. I don't really consider myself an experienced sewer. Um, but yeah, if you can run a sewing machine, you can do this. Just if you get the heavier, heavier fabric, obviously get um, like a jean denim needle or something. Um, but yeah, I am so happy with that. Oh, it keeps blurring. I'm so happy with this thing. Um, it's so nice. It turned out so lovely. Like I, it's like a week the whole time we're in Vancouver. I was like, look at it, babe. Look how nice it is. Um, so yeah, if bag making intimidates you, make this. Cause I was astounded. And like, I'm shit at reading instructions. Um, but her instructions are super clear. There's images of everything. I love that. Um, so yeah, do this. And it's such a like great bag for bigger projects. Um, now I have a proper project bag. I want to make another one. I have one that's for like a project bag for knitting, but it's a little backpack. I think that would be super cute. So I went to Beehive in Victoria. Um, I have a proper like yarn shopping, fabric shopping trip now planned for Victoria and Vancouver when I get to go by myself and go to as many stores as I want. Um, but that's not till August. So I had kind of pre-picked my, fa my fabric, my yarn out before I went. Uh, so I got Knitting for Olive. So I have plans. Um, I'll kind of roll this together. So I don't really have anything on the needles right now except a sock which is not much to show you but I will get there um so I want to do some summer knitting I think I think I'm going to cast on multiple projects I don't know if it's going to help me get things done or not but mm, we'll see um but I got the Kadri Kadri yes um I love all her summer tops so I only bought summer tops from her so I already had mm, I have pink cotton that I'll Probably put in whenever I do an update um, to make her sugar boo bralette um, that I got last year that I didn't use so that's on the list to do um, and then I got her Remy Remy top and the allure camisole and I got yarn at beehive for those um, so the plan I got knitting for olive um, silk so this is 100% um, burette silk and it feels it's not super silky like it kind of feels a little like it's a little rougher um, but so nice so the plan is to make the allure, con allure camisole out of this lovely silk what color is it um, this is powder um, I think it'll be really pretty I originally wanted to do it in blue, but they didn't have this in blue. They had really limited colors in the silk, and I knew I wanted it, so I've switched it. Um, so, silk, I got two balls, three balls. I think just two balls of these. It doesn't take much. It's kind of cropped, um, and these are pretty, like, full. But, um, yeah, pure silk. Really excited to knit with this. Um, and then I got another thing. Uh, while I was there, this was funny because like I picked a color off the wall that I wanted and I went up and I was like, hey, do you have like two more um, skeins of this? And they're like, oh yeah, we do. It was very different. So this is the one I got. And it's like, it has a sheen to it, right? Um, so this is the tin line 
and it is, where is it? 53% cotton, 33% viscous, and 14% linen. And I think it's the linen um, that's making it kind of have the sheen to it because some of the, two of the fibers are like lighter than another one. Um, or I'm not saying that right, not fibers, but like two of the strings in it. Strings, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, so it has this sheen. So the original one I picked out, didn't have the sheen. It was definitely, it was darker. Um, and I like, I really liked that, but I guess Sanjay's guard like changed the yarn partway through. So they had two, cause this was the same color apparently. Um, they like shockingly different colors. Uh, so there wasn't enough in the non sheeny one. Um, that was more solid blue instead of this, um, different colored one. Mm, there we go. Um, but I like this. It's grown on me because I knew I still wanted to use this. This is going to be the held double and I'm going to do the Remy. It's not a camisole. It's just the Remy top or whatever. Um, so it's a ribbed top and it'll be really pretty. Um, I will say this tin line has, it feels like it'll have a really nice drape. Um, I think that the linen and the viscous, um, make the cotton smoother. Uh, so I'm excited for this. Um, I thought it would just be nice to have something smaller uh, instead of big sweaters. So these are the things I got. I got four of these and two of these, I think. And then, so I had seen the Guernsey um, sweater from Sandy's Garn um, on Instagram. And I went to look up the pattern because I was like, oh, this is so pretty. Um, and you have to buy the book to buy the pattern um, and not a lot of places have their books but Beehive has their books so this is the sweater um, it's super lovely I think that is it the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit is like a similar vibe I think um, and this book has a lot of really nice ones like the one on the cover um, just a really plain sweater I think that would be really lovely so this is the 2202 Sandy's Garn. Um, yeah, mm, there's some like Norwegian words on there that I'm not going to try and say. Uh, it is in English though. Um, it has like a, is that better say? There's a bunch of patterns in here that are really lovely, like this one. Uh, it's a half sip. I think that would be so nice and like a boucle yarn. Mm. Um, the Guernsey sweater uh, is just like really soft cozy sweaters all the way through um so I'm kind of excited I think this will definitely be more of like fall knits um but yeah I would definitely check it out uh Sandy Skirt has really nice patterns I don't know if I'll use their yarn for the whole thing but um yeah I was like this is a treat I don't really have any knitting books so it was nice and I liked everything in it because I was really only buying it for one pattern so I would say that's a great win. I'm gonna take a sip of lemonade. Okay. Oh. So while I was on the island, um, Fiber Tales? Is that her name? I think so. So she had a sale on all her sock patterns and it was like, my you got a really good discount if you got all three of her sock patterns. And I really want to do socks. So I bought them all and then uh, bought yarn for it and I ordered it online and then picked it up when I came home. Um, so, um, I'll post, there's like the grow sock, this sock with little honeybees on it, and this sock with flowers on it. Post the links down below. They're really sweet. They're all natural fibers she uses. So this is the thing I started. And she, this doesn't have a photo on it. So, um, they don't usually print out the photos on patterns. Um, she also does all her socks on circular needles. Yes, circular needles. Um, so, look at it. It's so little. Uh, it really excited me, though, because I kind of hate double-pointed needles. Um, so, I got, these are, like, some Chiagu needles. I'm trying to get all my secondary needles in, like, or ones that are fixed 
and Chiaku because I got one set and they were like, it changed my life. I understand why people like go crazy over these needles. Speaking of which, that's a whole other purchase I made um, because they're so nice. I just have like the nitpick interchangeable ones and they're like, they're fine. For the price they are, they're great. But then I got um, a circular needle fixed one of Chiaku and I was like, oh, I understand. They're just like, feel nice in your hands. They're so smooth. They're so nice. So itty bitty. There's not much to show here because, um, yeah. But this is yarn I had, um, and it's Kremke? Because I got more. Kremke. I'm going to say it, pretend I'm saying that right. Um, and this, like, pinky? It's coming up very beige, um, but it has a bit more pink in it. Um, and it is a wool and linen mix, specifically, um, do do do, 80% wool, 20% linen, so a natural sock. Um, I'm, I think I'll do um, a knit and chat about this. I'm really trying to stay within natural materials, um, so not nylons and acrylics if I can. Uh, it's just me. We can go into that somewhere else, but I really wanted to try a natural sock art. So I'm starting this with, it's been a little rough to start because it's a bit tight when I cast it on. I think I'd cast it on a little too tight, but as I'm getting around this second row, it's getting looser. So um, I have that. That's the current thing I'm working on, and I'm going to start these two, um, I think one of the tabs. I think, I think the camisole, the layer camisole, the silk. I'm really excited about the silk. So not much to show there, but a Statement Junkie, one of their local yarn shops, is having a sale on their creme key. Uh, so I haven't used it, but I decided to buy more, obviously, because now I have these new sock patterns that I must have wool for. I have a problem. Uh, so, I got three more colors, because they were $10 off, which is like, went from $30 to $20, and like, yeah, I think that's a good price. So, I got this green. Look at it, it's so good. Um, the linen, you can definitely see it in this one, it's like kind of speckled. Um, and... There's like little pieces of the flax like kind of sticking out, you can see there. Um, so definitely very rustic. Um, but I think the patterns that I got will complement it because they're kind of rustic too. So I got, does it have the colors on it? I don't know, I'll try and figure it out. Dark green. And then this one was natural, which was a little more yellow than I wanted it to be. Almost has like a green undertone to it. Um, which is fine. Um, we had a thing for green. And then this one is uh, Sea Spray. Oh yeah, and this is Creme K Soul Wool and it's Lazy Linen. Um, so I have these, which they make a really nice sweater, I think, but uh, these are my plan for socks. Um, and it's quite, I don't know, I find it quite smooth. I don't think they'll be itchy at all. Um, the linen really, I guess, makes it stronger. So you don't have to, because that's the one thing, I guess, with, not that I've made socks, but with using all natural products in socks is that they'll wear down faster because wool, the nylon is the thing that like, keeps the wool together, right? So I think linen acts as the nylon in this case, so I'm really curious to see how it goes. Once I have socks and I've worn them, I can give an update on how those go. Um, but I'm committed now because I have four skeins of it. So, and then, where, oh, okay, yeah, so, uh, it's Chigu. So, uh, one of the other yarns, Joe's Yarn Garden, uh, they had a 20% off sale for this long weekend, and <laughs> it was 20% off if you spent $200, which I needed to get a circular needle for, um, 20, like a 24 inch 3 millimeter, um, because I don't have that for the camisole, yes, um, and the Chigu ones are more expensive. And then I've been oh, been looking at the Chigu shorties to do especially sleeves and stuff. And I have some stuff to do socks um, but and with worsted. And I was like, ooh, I could do socks with worsted on a 9 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 9 inch round. So I got an expensive little treat for myself. It was a really good deal. So because how often are needles 20% off. So um Oh, it's just older ones that I stuck in there, but I'll show you. Um, yeah, so 
this one is the 3.5 to 5 millimeter um, options and they come with a 3 inch needle and a 2 inch needle so you can get really small so I think the 2 inch needles would be really great for doing some chunkier socks which I have a lot of yarn for and patterns for so I'm excited um, oh, what a treat I can't wait to use them um, yeah like there's a reason everyone loves them they just they're so much nicer than it picks ones they don't tangle this is one of their fixed ones um, this is the first one I bought where I was like I'm a convert now um, and they just so smooth they don't tangles even the longer ones don't tangle they stay nice and straight oh so good so I'm trying to go on a diet of spending money on knitting things uh, it, it was broken when I got these but um, I'm super excited about them. And then, oh, because I had to make the 200, I got the other needle I needed. And I think I was at like 90 cents, 190 Yeah, I was $3 short of getting the 20% off. And I was like, well, I might as well just get some cheap yarn. So this is just a Briggs and Little Sport. It's kind of bluey um, with a bit of green in it. Um, kind of looks like dark gray overall, though. Uh, it's called Seafoam. I have a Briggs and Little pattern to make Briggs and Little socks out of their sport weight. Uh, this is an all just wool. Um, there's no nylon in it, so they're like five dollars. So I threw that in so I could get the better deal because this was this and the needle were free more or less, plus a discount, a good discount on that. Um, welcome to me trying to. Uh, talk myself into my purchases but it's good I had to get the needle one of these so this was an extra um, added to the wall of wool that I have over on that side of the room um, so those will get that'll get made into a sock um, but yeah if you ever need it's definitely itchy but the Briggs and wool Briggs and little wool is itchy but it's cheap um, I did was talking to someone who held it with mohair and they're like suddenly it's like the nicest yarn ever so I kind of want to try that at one point because it is Canadian wool which is nice and it's really ex uh, inexpensive uh, so holding it with the mohair would be really nice I think to get that halo that softness to it um, but then you get the hard wearing wool so we'll see definitely interested in that um, not so much knitting related but I went to a bookstore and I, I got this book out of the library a few weeks ago, read half of it, returned it, um, and knew immediately that I had to have it. So I am obsessed with fiber arts and stuff, but for me, like, I don't just want to do the things. I also want to know all about them. I love reading about um, textiles um, and knowing the history um, of an area's textile. And I, um, an area's textile, like the textile history of an area. I love knowing that. I love talking to people about textile stuff um, and I yeah reading about people's experiences and stuff so I like to you know hyper fixate on things so this was a book I actually got because for our last weekend of yoga and teacher training we had to do a presentation and I did mine on crafting as yoga and how there's a spiritual connection there which if you're interested in that I can do a chat about touching on that but um, it's called um, Hmm. Making a Life by Melanie Fall Fallick and it's just this beautiful, it's like a coffee table book. Um, I was in a little store downtown Edmonton with a friend and I saw it and I was like, oh, just, there it is, my dream book. Um, but just like really pretty photography. It's like a series of kind of essays slash interviews um, with, this is blurry all out, isn't it? Um, let me see if I can change that. Nope, okay. Um, you can see. Um, so it's just a really beautiful book, and there's just a lot, um, a lot of it's textile art, but not all of it. So she interviews um, potters and woodworkers and metal workers, and then a lot of fiber arts, because I think Melanie Felic is a knitter, um, and she has published and written knitting books. So uh, definitely like a focus on fiber for this one but oh, the way it's written is just so nice there's so many stories of just how um like weaving saved weaving or spinning or knitting or this thing that I make saved me it's my life um it's 
also something bigger. It's like something that can connect you to community and spirit, you know, a spirituality aspect to it. Um, it's just, it's so nice. Uh, I think the creative Pearl Soho is in here too. I didn't get that far, but I saw her in here and kind of just the magic of making um, and how good it is for the soul um, and life and creating meaning. Um, so if you're into that, recommend checking it out. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's a gorgeous book and I can't wait to read more now that I have it and I can take my time. I don't feel rushed. Um, I love books. That's a whole other problem I have. But um, yeah, making life. I thought it was fitting. Um, yeah, I'm, this is a treat for sure. And uh, yeah. Oh, the cutest little store with an, oh my God. Like, you know those fancy stores where, you know those books you see on Instagram of like, maybe it's just me and my algorithm, but like, I follow people who post like, cottagey core and dark academia and they always have these really pretty books like um really fancy editions of like classics uh this store had those it was wonderful um they had, like clearly specializing they was part stationary store and part like specialized bookstore so like i've seen people on youtube and stuff talk about this um copy of they had Little Woman and Pride and Prejudice where like any letters that were talked about in the story are actually written out and like included in where you can like take the letter out of its envelope and read it um as if you were getting the letter and they had those there and I was like I have spent so much money here so specialized bookstore was super cool so yeah is there anything else I told you about Vancouver Island went over the projects I'm going to start because I don't really have anything on right now. Yeah. I think that's all I'm doing. Oh, I totally forgot. Never mind. I made a dress. <laughs> and I think it's really cute. I'm going to show it. Okay. I'm going to post a little clip of me actually wearing it because it's easier. Um, but I made a linen dress. Uh, this is like a, it was like a free pattern that I have heavily modified um so I don't really count it as like I'm using this pattern because I changed it so much that it's like something completely new um but yeah it was thread in at the end uh it's so comfy I think it'll be like so cute with like a cropped little blue sweater for like fall um that was this week's make uh while I was procrastinating from finishing the plutolopi tunic um I made a dress as you do um that was fun anyway yeah so that's all I got um I really want to start doing like a knit and chat style um where we just sit and chat about a topic of interest um so I'm trying to think of like some I could talk about kind of like my ethics around um knitting and like why I choose the fibers that I do blah 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 um that could be an interesting one like we could talk a touch on like sustainability and stuff I have a degree in environmental studies me biology so if you want to know about that side of things um I'd love to talk about it um or I touched on like the kind of I've done a talk on crafting is spirituality and it's yoga practice and stuff um we could go into that um, but yeah, if like there's anything you want to know that you think would be of interest, just like my take on something or, um, I'm not like the best knitter yet. So like maybe not on techniques, but, um, anything around the world of fiber arts, um, I'd love to do like a chit chat on it. Um, I think that would be fun. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow me a more day to day, you can check out my Instagram at mountain head, mountain heather creative. Um, and also adventurefiberworks.com is our website a little slower updates but there's blog posts up there sometimes um and yeah if you're enjoying this give it a like subscribe tell me what you're working on in the comments any summer plans that you have now that it's it's proper summer um i think we're gonna have a chiller summer this year but yeah, let me know what you're up to this summer. Let me know if you have any adventures planned or like your knitting plans for it. Would love to hear it. 
Have a wonderful day and stay crafty. Bye.